This episode is brought to you by Alouette, where, as the name would suggest, all of the skincare and beauty products are made with organic aloe vera. If you would like to try the best-selling restorative enzyme peel, this is for your face, callous barbell hands, and running feet, just go to runliftmompod.com slash peel. Again, that's runliftmompod.com slash peel, and I will get you the Alouette restorative enzyme peel. Welcome to the Run Lift Mom Podcast, where we're talking about running, lifting, and momming, not necessarily in that order. Today, we are squarely in the momming category with Zen expert, Samantha Gordon of Sam Bay Zen, and she is talking to us about how to remain Zen in crisis. You're going to hear her discuss the book and journal that she wrote. You're also going to hear her talk about how her message had perfect timing in 2020 and now 2021. We know things are getting back to normal, but mama, you still have crises and we want you to remain zen and in peace. So without further ado, Samantha Gordon. All right, welcome Samantha Gordon to the Run Lift Mom podcast. How are you doing today? I'm doing wonderfully. Very zen today. Well, and that is exactly what I've brought you here to speak about because Zen is your business. Samantha, tell us a little bit about yourself. So thank you for having me on the show. Um, I am a self-help author, yogi, and communications expert. So I used to have a TV show in wellness and self-improvement. And during the pandemic, I actually published a book called How to Be Zen in a Crisis, which was obviously very timely, (laughs) but I had outlined this book previously, and it just so happened to come out at a perfect time to help those going through a worldwide crisis. My type of Zen is not the capitalized Z, so that doesn't mean you have to wear a loincloth, you don't have to shave your head. It's really just a synonym for peace, and it's all about all about getting peaceful so that you are able to make the best decisions for your life and your family so that you can be resilient and not just survive the crisis, but actually thrive in it and from it. So that once the crisis is over, you're actually in a way better place. I love this. It is fantastic. You know, um, peace isn't necessarily synonymous with crisis, right? (laughs) Right. um, You know, can you give us maybe a personal example of how you might achieve peace in a crisis situation? Right. So the first thing that you really need to understand is this is not a normal situation, meaning that the steps and the tools that you will need to utilize during this crisis process back to Zen is going to be more thorough and robust than a normal day. So just right there, don't expect that it's going to be a quick, you know, snap your fingers and you're totally fine again. No, it's actually very thorough. That's why I've written an entire book and not just, you know, an article or doing maybe one YouTube video. It's because there are a lot of steps. And of course, I cannot get into all of them right now, but Basically, the message behind it is you really have to do all of that inner work in addition to assessing your external world. So that means freeing yourself of all of these negative emotions and really analyzing your external world to see what it actually is, not making it worse than it is, and also not denying what the reality is. And that is just so that you can have a wonderful backdrop for your own resilience journey. So the first step is really just to understand what situation you're in and really just embody all that is happening around you because you really have to first see what is happening in the world for what it is and just kind of center yourself. And I actually do throughout my book have these meditative exercises so that you're able to practice the theory and the pathway to Zen each step of the way. 
Love that. I know that, you know, um, listeners of this show are kind of the high achieving types, right? We're the fitness mind right. people. Um, and so having something specific like a meditation sheet, something specific to complete is really helpful. May I ask you, Samantha, I know that um, maybe somebody listening is not unlike me and we've accepted the reality of where this pandemic has us. But mm -hmm. like it's lasting girlfriend a lot longer than we thought it would. Like we thought we would be done by the fall. You heard? Um, what advice would you give to someone that is thinking, all right, I thought I was Zen and now I'm starting to feel a little bit anxious all over again. Right. And that is one of my chapters in here. And it's realizing that Zen is not just a one-time thing. So the fact that you are on a non-linear journey to get Zen is actually part of the deal. And yes, it is, you know, taking longer than we thought. That's kind of how crises go. They are not what we expected. They're not when we expect them to be. So the journey to Zen is all about making sure that you're the best person you can be. And as long as you're resilient, it doesn't actually matter what's happening in your external world because internally you are strong and you can handle anything. And the best advice I have for someone in this moment is to realize that you only ever have this moment. So focus on the moment in front of you, which in this exact moment right now, as you're listening to this, you are safe. And I have a wonderful meditative exercise within my book that reminds you to ground yourself in this moment because you actually don't have to worry about what's happening in the future because you have no idea. You don't own a crystal ball. And all you have to worry about right now is staying present in the moment and dealing with your emotions currently in a healthy way and hopefully utilizing some of that excess negative energy and channeling it into a productive space. That's exactly what I did on my journey is, of course, you know, as a Zen master, I'm still a human being. So I do feel all of these human emotions. And what I did was just channel them into something helpful for others. And I've used my own stress to actually create a pathway for other people to get out of it. And, you know, you don't necessarily have to become, you know, a Zen guru throughout the crisis, but what you can do is you can channel this fear and all of this type of energy. It actually is very powerful energy and you can do something wonderful. Maybe you want to create an art project with your kids. Maybe you want to do some more charity work digitally, maybe. <laughs> uh, just There are many ways that you can help the world right now and really redirect your energy of fear into something extraordinarily productive so that once the crisis is over, you'll be like, wow, look at all I achieved. Look at all I did to help the world during this time. I love this, Samantha. You're blowing my mind because energy is energy. And so what I hear you saying is point that energy in the direction of something positive. And mama, if you're listening out there, hear Samantha when she says it's not a linear journey and resilience is key. We know that as mothers. Oh, absolutely. And there's going to be bad days. There's going to be more challenging days. And some days, you know what? You are going to be able to embody that Zen place much quicker than others. And you are going to be like, wow, yes, I have this amazing idea. I know how I can help people. I know how I can help my family. You know, some of those days are going to be easier than others. Some days they're, you know, not days long. Sometimes they're just a quick moment before it goes back to the panic, right? But what will happen along your journey is if you keep redirecting yourself to a place of Zen and a place where you can really make the best decisions for your life from a point of resilience is it's going to get easier and it's not going to be linear. And one moment you're going to be like, wow, this has actually been a really long Zen moment. I must be getting better at this. That will happen if you continue on the journey of doing your self-work, your self-care, and just really getting centered in Zen. 
Oh, it's so fantastic. Listener, we are going to link to Samantha's book. You're actually going to be able to click details or swipe up, going to depend on the player that you're in. But this is so fantastic. Samantha, it occurs to me, you have written a book for the moment in time we are all experiencing. What a blessing. And it's really cool to hear you talk us through this. Where can folks find you besides in your book if they want to learn more? Yes. So I actually, on my Instagram, it's Sam Bay Zen. So that's S-A-M-B-A-E-Z-E-N. I have some free meditative exercises there that I actually recorded during the lockdown. <laughs> um, and they, you know, I will say this, my book, my message, just my natural personality, it's all very lighthearted. So of course, we're dealing with, you know, serious topics, but all of across my channels um, on Sambay Zen, my website, sambayzen.wixsite.com, all of my message is very lighthearted. So, and I think that's really important right now because we don't need any more. <laughs> we don't need to be weighed down anymore. We don't need any more fear. And it's okay to laugh during the crisis. Agreed. And I think that is a great place to end on. It's okay to laugh during the crisis. Thank you for bringing peace to this episode. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for listening to the Run, Lift, Mom podcast. I want to let you know that you can swipe up in the podcast player that you're in to see the show notes. That's going to take you to my website and you're going to get a deep dive on today's show. Cool, huh? You can think of it as a blog post that complements what was covered today with all of the links and resources discussed. Don't forget to check out the podcast partners as well with some really great offers for you. And until I get into your earpiece again, remember, for while bodily training is of some value, godliness is of value in every way, as it holds promise for the present life and also for the life to come. That's from 1 Timothy 4.8, and this has been the Run Lift Mom Podcast.